Warning, this game contains content that might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer's discretion is advised. The brightness of the computer screen was killing me. The adjustment wheel was sticky, so I didn't dare touch it. I resisted the urge to check the clock. I did not want to see how late it was getting. I had a stack of horror movies waiting for me at home, and my solo totally not sad Halloween marathon was looking like it might get ruined. I intended to sit on the couch, eat takeout, and watch Blood and Mayhem play out for my enjoyment on the screen. Instead, I was sitting at the desk, going over forums from our way-too-successful blood drive. Real blood was just not as fun as fake blood. I sighed. Night had gone quiet. All the nearby shops were closed, and everyone was out at Halloween parties or trick-or-treating with their families. Of course I can stay late. It's not like I have anyone at home waiting for me. And aside again. There was a small tapping on the window behind me. I turned around, expecting to see an errant tree branch or bush. However, it was a woman instead. <gasps> Hi! Vampire mommy! How's it going? I almost fell out of the chair, trying to turn around to face her. She stood there, tapping gently and looking at me through the glass. Trick or treat. Oh! Oh no! Literal vampire mommy! Oh god! She said it slowly, enjoying every syllable. Her chest heaved as she breathed. She wore a tight corset with pink leopard print and had long, flowing blonde hair. Great. A drunk. <laughs> Is that what you're gonna call closed. it? Come back tomorrow. Sober? I mean, I don't know if she drunk, fam. I mean, she might just be drunk off of you. I said the last part quietly. She grinned at me. <gasps> My darling, I assure you I am very sober. I'd love to get a drink. With you, though. Well, that's one way to put it. <laughs> I felt the blood rush to my face. I'd never been hit on so directly by a woman. And now there was one standing outside the window doing just that. Did I die of boredom? Um. Uh, yeah, I could get a drink with you. No, <laughs> no thanks, strangely. <laughs> yeah, I could get a drink with you. Well, maybe when I'm not at work. Wait, I'm at work right now? This was not the weirdest way I had ever been asked out, so... Please, dear one, let me come in. Oh, wow, you're going with the classic uh, vampires have to be, like, invited to enter someone's home? You guys have more class than people these days. No, I couldn't do that. We're close. Start to explain, but there was a loud knocking at our front entrance. Darn it. Now what? Um, excuse me. Guess. Well, let's see who's at the door. I walked away from the woman at the window. I walked towards the front. It was Halloween. Why did I think I'd have a normal night at work, closed or not? The front of our clinic was all glass, so I could easily make out another woman. She knocked on the door until she saw me and then stopped. She pushed her glasses up her nose, then gave a harsh wave. She wore a baggy sports jersey over a pair of washed out overalls. Greetings. Hi. Oh, for frick's sake! I'm sorry. We're closed. I see that. However, if I could just come in for a moment? My god, uh, this is really looking like the 90s. Well, why? I rubbed my cheeks. Why me? I should be bloated from salty junk food and laughing at ridiculous jump scares right now. Not trying to explain our hours to strange yet attractive women. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we're closed. Door knocker lady seemed to see something because she looked away at that skull. You're late, Carmilla. The woman from before walked around, stand beside the other. I guess her name was Carmilla. Uh, I am not. I was trying to get in through the back. Ayo! <laughs> there isn't a door back there. I mean, she can still come in from the back. <laughs> no. But there is a window. Man, it really is. I mean, this is the 90s, not the 2000s. Well, to be fair, like, better in the 90s is something along the lines of, like, throwing rocks at someone's windows or something. Do people break windows back then? Like, is that a thing that happened back in the day? She purred the words while looking at me, then turned back to the other woman. 
I saw her first, Elizabeth. That is true. That is true. But you guys can always share. I mean, heck, there's plenty of blood to go around. So the other woman was named Elizabeth, and they seemed to know each other. I glanced back at the computer. I said, so much work to do. That kind of nonsense is not why we're here. Hey, yo. <laughs> she looked over me slowly and continued. I think. So, uh, like I, uh, said, we're closed. They both turned their attention to me, causing a sensation similar to ice sliding down my spine at their sudden attention. I cleared my throat and tried again. You can come tomorrow morning if you'd like to donate some blood. My love, we're not here to give blood. We're here to take it. I mean, sure, like, let me just get a pack from the back. Excuse me? Elizabeth sighed and pushed her glasses up to the bridge of her nose. It seemed to be a habit she did often. At least this was the second time I had witnessed it. Take is such a strong word. You see, we have an agreement with Claudia. Is she here? I stood up a bit straighter, suddenly understanding what this late night visit was about. She doesn't work here anymore. She got fired because... I guess it solved the mystery of why she kept sneaking in here after we were closed. Blood had gone missing. So had some medications and money. You should both leave before I call my boss. Um, wait. Is it really, like, ticking her head? Like, what's going on? Are these are vampires. Like, did she take a look at their fangs, their little teetsies? I crossed my arms, grateful that the door was locked. It'd be easier to stand tall and act braver than I really was. Carmilla frowned and placed a palm on the glass. Uh, you wound me. <laughs> Man, the amount of sass Carmilla has. This Love is it. unfortunate. Indeed, it is absolutely unfortunate. She muttered something under her breath, but I didn't quite catch it. Carmilla seemed to have heard, but didn't react. I'm not letting you guys in so you can rob the place. So... Shoot! Wait, who who robs a clinic of blood packs? Who does that? I mean, maybe for the black market, but like, could you think about it for a minute, Mina? Why do you think they're taking packs of blood? I waved my arms at them. The same time I could get that overconfident raccoon off of my porch. My work. Rub the place. I suspected Claudia was up to something. A shame. <laughs> Wait, so you're telling me that aside from giving you guys blood, she's also actually robbing the place? Jesus Christ. No, I can't believe it. Sweet, innocent Claudia. Well, she really all that innocent. <laughs> I had not known Claudia well, but those are not words I would have used to describe her. She was an old woman with a sour face, though not nearly as mean as she looked. For the most part, she kept to herself. Who would have suspected she was robbing the place blind? Oh my god, that is really... That is the conclusion you drew from this? Really, Mina? Shoo. Go on. I half-heartedly waved at them again. Maybe it will work the second time? We are not stray cats, miss... Carmilla smiled sweetly at me. Her name is Mina. How did you know that? Uh, pretty sure you're wearing a tag somewhere. Elizabeth peered closer at me. Then point at my chest. I looked down. Name tag. See? Called it. Miss Mina, we're merely asking for one bag of blood each. Only once a month? Yeah, you know, it's a fair trade. You're telling me the other missing things were not because of you two? Do I look like I need money? <laughs> my god, I think we pissed her off. <laughs> Carmilla scoffed and pushed her hair off of her shoulder in a haughty movement. We were unaware she was taking more than the two bags. Oh god, yeah. I'm guessing that Claudia was not the most honest of people. What did you want with the blood anyway? Elizabeth's eyes widened, and she shot a look at Carmilla. Don't. We're vampires, <laughs> darling. <laughs> I freaking love the accent she had to like put behind that as well. She opened her mouth a bit. And sure enough, she had two extended canines. Ha ha. Very funny. It's Halloween. I'm pretty sure I have a pair of plastic fangs like that in my drawer. <laughs> oh god, Mina has so much sass. I love Ooh, her. Kinky. Hey yo! 
She winked at me. Elizabeth let out a long, tired sigh. I told you, no one will ever believe you if you just blurt it out like that. Tramilla shrugged. Elizabeth turned to face me, gave me a small smile. I suppose it was meant to look reassuring. She is right, though. We're both vampires. She opened her mouth and showed off her own matching set of fangs. I nodded. Is this a prank? Like, get a bag of blood and you're in, or... They look too old to be in sorority. I studied their faces for a moment. For the sake of getting this over with, let's pretend I believe you. You're both vampires. Right? Why should I just hand over some blood bags? I mean, it's better than them, like, feeding off everyone else in town, Mina. Like, think about that for a moment. But then again, it would make sense that Mina um, does not believe that they're vampires. I mean, I'm pretty sure that in this universe, like, heck, uh, VTMB wasn't that big. I mean, it was probably, like, a really niche board game way back in the day. But, you know, like, vampires were just a thing of fiction back in the day. Camilla smiled and leaned forward. Eyes half lit it with a wide smile. What if I say, please? Oh my god, Carmilla, god. She purred, sliding her fingers gently against the glass that separated us. How about a deal? You give us this one-time supply, and afterwards, we'll find another supplier. The thing is, we need some tonight. We don't have time to find another... Ethical source. That is true. And besides, like, heck, you could give him, like, something which, you know... You probably won't need, like, maybe an AB blood type. Like, who takes AB blood type, anyway? So? If we don't get the blood here, we'll have to get it another way. And you do not want those bloods on your hands, uh, Mina. I mean, that blood on your hand. Carmilla sighed. Ugh, she means we'll have to find a drunk human, lure them into a dreadful alley, and drink our monthly fill from them. I mean... Not a bad idea. There's, pr there's plenty of, like, terrible people out there. I mean, heck, you be doing this town of justice. It's so unsanitary to drink a stranger's blood. I never thought about that. Elizabeth tussed and shook her head. It also isn't great for the humans. Is that what you'd have us resort to? Are you threatening me? Are you saying if I don't give you some blood, you'll go out and kill some unsuspecting partiers? Yeah, that's exactly what they're saying. How ridiculous. We never kill them. At least on purpose. <laughs> I looked at them. They were both very pretty. But were they really immortal because of the night? And I'm supposed to just hand them over some blood bags because of this bowl. Okay, prove it. Prove that you're vampires. I need to know for sure. You can't be serious. I mean, how are they going to prove it to you? Prove it? Prove to me that you're both vampires. Somehow. Mm, fangs don't count. Well, yeah, I mean, fangs can easily be faked. Elizabeth rolled her eyes. I crossed my arms and used my most stern expression. Carmilla frowned. What? Like a dancing monkey at a carnival? How vulgar! Fine. Open the door. What? No way! You want proof or not? We can't come in unless we're invited. You could always come out here if you prefer. <laughs> I wonder what she's gonna pick. Oh, yes. Come out here with us. I didn't love the idea of opening the door, but if they were vampires, they wouldn't be able to get in. And if they weren't, well... It didn't look that dangerous. I mean, heck, it's just a night of lesbian vampires. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, oh, open the door, go inside. Open the door, go inside. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, God. Oh, God. I I want them inside uh, the, the clinic. The clinic. I decided to open the door, but would stay inside where I felt safer. If only a bit of hesitation, I opened the door, stepping back but ready to slam the door closed if they tried anything. They just stood there and didn't dash in like I had feared. Okay, now what? Elizabeth smirked. She grabbed hold of Carmilla, who looked confused and then very upset. <laughs> Don't you dare, you vile! Do I? <laughs> Don't <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's move lift the Carmilla up off the ground as if she weighed nothing to throw it towards the doorway. <laughs> I expected her to sail through, but she didn't. I guess in horror, it was almost like a cartoon. <laughs> Carmilla landed hard against the opening instead of sailing through it like she should have done. It was like there was an invisible door there. She slid down and landed on a pavement with an annoying grunt. <laughs> now do you believe us? Carmilla stood up but seemed unshaken and uninjured. She glared at Elizabeth. I swear to God, Amina thought that that was just a really good, like, mime routine. Like, I would not blame her. That was amazing. <laughs> I'll get you back for that. You can get her back right now. I mean, heck, if you want to slam her against the wall, I mean, I mean, not like you haven't already done that in other aspects. I guess I had no choice but to believe them. Okay. I believe you both. How about the vampire thing? That is... I shook my head. That is wild. Do you... Are you into it? Yes, yes. Now, can we discuss the blood? Please. Right. If they were vampires, they needed blood. However, it would be risky. Our inventories were watched much closer after Claudia was caught stealing. So, I was here alone and currently working with the inventory files. I could possibly mark two bags was contaminated for disposal and might not check the numbers too closely as long as it did become a regular thing. Uh, give me a minute to figure this out, okay? Just let me see if I can fudge the numbers or not. Carmilla hummed a little while Elizabeth adjusted her glasses again. I didn't want to leave them waiting too long. I went back to my computer and scanned a spreadsheet of donations I had been in the middle of processing before they came. Heck, there was still so much left to do. There's no way I'd be able to finish it all tonight, even without a distraction. Alright, time to commit a human error. I marked the next two entries as contaminated. Now to actually locate the bags. I stood up and walked briskly back towards the front. Carmilla and Elizabeth were still there, so I gave them a quick thumbs up. They only blinked in response. I smiled awkwardly. I tried not to notice Carmilla's cleavage and Elizabeth's posture. God, you're, you are down bad for both of them. Eh, to be fair, I'm not gonna blame you. Like, they both have their own sense of class here, and I am... I like it. What was it about someone's posture that could be so hot? Ah, oh, frick. They're staring now. I mean, who knows, I might just be absolutely enthralled by them at this point. I turned away and headed back towards the walk-in refrigerator. My mind was going to bad places. I had been single for too long. A lab coat was so thin, it didn't do much against the coldness of the room. At least I knew what I was looking for. Aha! Uh -huh, found them! I went back to the front to show them. I was able to get you two bags of blood. Nice. Excellent! That is fantastic, Miss Mina. Ah, uh, thank you, too. I handed over the bags of blood to them, both of whom took one bag each with a smile. I looked back towards where my desk was. I really should get back to work, even if I was tempted to linger. Well, it's been fun. <laughs> um, see ya. <laughs> She's so awkward. <laughs> Vampires. Wow. If I had a chance to get to know one of them a bit better. Oh! I gotta choose! Uh, ooh, hey, ha! Uh, we're gonna go for both eight away, so uh, let's start with the first one we met, Carmilla. Carmilla cleared her throat. Sweet human, don't be so hasty. What do you mean? I paused. The night is still very young. Why don't we get that drink? Sounds good. It was really too late to be here by myself. Well, it could hurt. She's a vampire. And questions! I watched her twirl her finger around a strand of her soft looking hair, then gently bit her lower lip. Totally, totally innocent questions. Okay. Let me close up. I turned away and hoped I didn't look like a toll dope. Calm your gay ass down, Mina! <laughs> we took a cab to a bar. I swear I had walked past several times. I never got inside before, though. There were plenty of rumors that it was a gay bar. Carmilla confidently walked inside and seemed to know everyone. I couldn't help but wonder. Is 
this a vampire bar? I whisper as soon as we sat down. I couldn't believe such a crowded place had an empty booth. Carmilla seemed to know that I was here because she had led us straight to it. Oh? Bloodlust? This is my bar. She owns a bar? Like, you come here all the time? No, little Mina. I own it. Bloodlust is mine. Holy heck. Carmilla is like ten times cooler than I thought she was. She leaned back in the booth and smiled at me. Wow. So everybody here is a vampire? I doubt it, actually. She laughed. No, of course not. Some are, sure. Is it really okay for me to know that you're a vampire? I glanced around the bar. Would some super secret vampire cabal appear and convince her she either needed to change me or kill me? That's the kind of thing that would happen in movies, at least. Sure it is. You're such a doll. You have so many questions, don't you? Oh, I have plenty. Yes. Yes, I do. Oh my god, Mina's gay ass is such a gosh darn nerd. I absolutely love her. She nodded, looking amused. Okay then, fire away. Can you go out during the day? Is sunlight lethal? Sunlight is bad, yes. I always preferred moonlight. Don't you? I mean, honestly, yes. I mean, I feel a lot more invigorated in the night. Uh, sure. What about crosses and garlic? Hmm. I can't really eat food like you do, if that's what you mean. It doesn't ward you off? I, I doubt it. <laughs> no. And crosses do not bother me. She smiled slowly. Nuns? can be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh my god. How many of you out there are blushing right now? Like, honestly, how many of you gay asses out there are blushing? Because goddamn, like, my pan ass is blushing like a mofo. She spoke distantly, and I thought it might be best to change the subject. Do you sleep in a coffin? I don't think anyone does. Camilla laughed harder than she had so far. <laughs> Oh, could you imagine? One of those tiny boxes? Gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. These are like a lot of classic stereotypes. I sleep in a very large and quite comfortable king-sized canopy bed. Well, does it have room for one more? She paused, the amusement fading from her face and a very different emotion replacing it. Would you like to see it? Oh, yes. <laughs> I shudder and hope like hell she didn't notice. I glanced away towards the bar. Maybe. Um, <clears throat> I should go get us <laughs> drinks uh, or... Um... Oh, my God. Where is the voice actor from Mina? Like, she's doing an absolute amazing job at capturing the whole, like, Ah, oh, hey! drinks i don't drink but let me get you something it's free for me of course what will you have i would love a drink something to keep my hands busy at least i was so nervous and afraid that my hands might go wandering like into her hands i wanted her uh old-fashioned bloody mary uh virgin mojito sex on a beach yeah let's go for a bloody mary i do love myself a bloody mary that's the bar's signature drink you know Ooh, hell yeah. Hit me up, fam. It's got to be good then, right? Only the best. Especially for you. Man, all the voice, voice actors in this are so good. Frick. One drink coming right up. She left the booth and headed towards the bar. The crowd parted for her without any effort on her part. I used her absence as a chance to take a breath and get my thoughts in order. I was on a date with a vampire. Ah! It was a date, right? Yeah, it's totally a date, right? Right, right, right? What you got back? I needed to act like I wasn't a total loser. How does a human even try to impress a vampire? Here you go. Oh, uh, she handed me my Bloody Mary and then sat back down. She moved closer to me, easier in a circular booth. Um, thank 
like you. <laughs> she is definitely still flustered. I sipped at it and watched her over the rim of the glass. It was a good Bloody Mary, I think. I couldn't properly taste it while I was looking at Carmilla. She looked so comfortable and confident. She smiled at me. Smiled so easily. So sophisticated. Lee. Humans are so cute. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you, Carmilla. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, well, try to get to know her. Have you been a vampire very long? She thought about it for a moment, gazing up at the ceiling. A good while. I was turned back in the 30s. Holy frick, that's at least like 60 years or so. The 1830s? What? Darling, no. 1930s. I had just moved out to California after watching... She smiled faintly. I listened intently. I think it was Frankenstein, actually. I wanted to be an actress. How did she get turned? Really? Did you ever star in anything? No, I only ever got a few parts as an extra. Not even a speaking line. Oh jeez, that's kind of sad. Do you ever want to go back? There was a sad, nostalgic tone to her voice that has made me pause. Perhaps a dream that was never realized. No, I was turned. Then after ten years or so, I had to move. Because, because you stopped aging, and it would look suspicious? Sure, but I was going to say things got boring. I like to move every decade or so. Well, understandable. I mean, heck, like, if you have an entire eternity to, like, live your life, heck, like, going through the same routine every day for, like, at least 60 years, eh, ain't gonna do you wonders. Curiosity was getting the best of me. I moved a bit closer and lowered my voice. Are you allowed to tell me about how you turn into a vampire? She nodded and moved even closer. Now we were touching, her thigh against mine, our arms brushed against each other. Carmilla pushed my hair behind my ear and got a f I could feel the slightest tickle of her lips as she whispered. No. <laughs> She pulled back to laugh at my shocked expression. I'm kidding, dear one. It happened in Hollywood. I knew someone who knew someone, and then I ended up at a party. One thing led to another. And you were sucking blood for the rest of eternity. She shrugged. Now I've got fangs. Nice. Wow. Just like that? I thought about all the movies I had ever seen that featured vampires. They were either manipulative monsters or brooding and self-hating. Like Dracula from Renfield? Like, Nick Cage did an amazing job at that, by the way. Do you ever regret it? No. She put her arm around me and pulled me close, causing my vampire-related thoughts to stall. Enough about me, darling. Let's talk about you. M me My voice cracked. Tell me about yourself. There isn't a lot to tell. Mm, don't make me beg. God damn. <laughs> she grinned. It was hard to concentrate when she was this close. She smelled like strawberries. I cleared my throat and told her about uh, my passion for horror. Why not? I love horror. All horror. Really? How interesting. I love all the old Universal monsters. Also, there was a real boom in horror in the past decade, and I really think the genre deserves more respect. Yeah, that's true. I, I can't remember what the horror movies were like back in the 90s, but I remember there was a time when, like, I don't know, every slasher flick um, and just about any monster flick in existence just kept getting... More and more sequels till it just got absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it was fun. It was fun. It, they were a fun watch. But at the same time, like, it, it's nice that these days we, like, we are exploring, like, more themes and more aspects of horror than uh, we did, like, way back in the day. They were fun. I would love to go back to actually watch more uh, B-rated horror movies, but still. 
There are so many subgenres too, like Alien would be cosmic horror and the Halloween movies would be slasher. Who doesn't love a good ghost movie too? Wait, 97, has Paranormal Activity released yet? I don't even remember. I just watched The Shining a bit ago. It was really good, but I heard the director was a total asshole. That one was sort of based on a novel, but it wasn't very similar. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> the director of that was, um, is, is a nightmare to deal with. And honestly, I, I've, I heard that quite a lot of the actors like came out there like pretty screwed up at the end, but uh, uh, we got a pretty good movie out of it. So please stop abusing actors. We do not need to keep glorifying method actors. Horror novels are good too. Have you ever read Stephen King? He's the one who wrote The Shining. I try to read other authors too. I stopped myself. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. She didn't look bothered, and her eyes hasn't glazed over like I had seen so often before. I enjoy horror. Though I prefer romance. Well... Like, you and me both? She reached over and picked something off of my shirt. I think... I enjoy listening to you talk about horror more than I enjoy anything else. Oh my god. So? My voice cracked. She was just so close. It made me nervous, but like, good nervous. What cool vampire powers do you have? <laughs> well, I can see very recent memories, I heal fast, and I'm pretty strong and quick. Hmm. She seemed to think it over. She tapped her chin thoughtfully. I don't age, which is fabulous. Oh yeah, I can imagine. I nodded. Other than the memory thing, it was all typical vampire stuff. Can you fly? She laughed. No, but oh, wouldn't that be wicked? Oh, hell yeah. She placed a hand on my knee and I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah? <laughs> that was all I could manage. I took another sip of my drink. What else do you talk about on a date? I've been so long since I had been on one. I was never very good at them. I'm surprised you haven't asked me if I was willing to turn you. Uh, oh, uh, I actually, I already like women. <laughs> oh my god, Vita is so freaking, man, there is nothing between those ears. <laughs> she bit her lip and I had the feeling she was trying not to laugh. I meant into a vampire, but... That is good to hear. <laughs> I felt her hand slide up my thigh as her fingers drummed a small tune. Vampire? I didn't really think of it. Would you like me to tell you exactly how it's done? Yes. She moved her hand higher. <sighs> <laughs> oh god, the panic, the absolute panic. What were we talking about? I couldn't focus on anything with the way she was looking at me and touching me. I glanced down at her lips, painted with dark red lipstick. I could see the glint of white fangs. Well? She was asking me a question. Frick. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. She grinned and leaned in close to whisper against my ear. I shuddered at the sensation of her breath against my skin. First, I would soften the skin with my tongue. Yes. She licked the tip of my ear and I practically jumped out of my seat. I almost spilled my drink everywhere. S sorry. Uh, I like to be direct. Okay, yep, I, I can see. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like you, Mina. I... I like you, too. She reached over and pulled me close to her again. One hand on my hip and the other one... Began to rum circles on the back of my neck. So then, you wouldn't mind terribly if I kissed you? Uh, I glanced around around the room, but no one was really looking at us. If they did, um, did it matter? This was a bar, not a church or something. I nodded. Yes, I would very much like to be kissing right now. She leaned forward without another word and pressed her lips against mine. I felt my eyelids flutter close. I could hear the throbbing music in the bar, some grungy rock song I didn't know. Carmilla tasted sharp, like copper, 
there was also the hint of something quite sweet. Her hair was as soft as I imagined. I felt surrounded by strawberry fields. Must be your shampoo. She pulled away and giggled, moving to kiss the side of my face, then drifting to my throat. Are you going to bite me? Uh, please. I asked, dazed. Do you want me to? Yes. I felt the tips of her fangs brush gently against my skin, icy and severe. Despite a small voice telling me being bitten was probably not a good idea, I couldn't help but think, yes, I wanted her to bite me. I wanted her to bite me badly. Her breath was hot, despite the otherwise coolness of her skin and mouth. Yes. There was a sharp scrape of her fang against my skin, and then a quick prick. It only hurt for a moment. Afterwards, I felt a slow, heavy warmth come over me. Lost her only briefly before she pulled away to smile at me. Just a touch of blood at the corner of her lips. I laughed, feeling a bit drunk. Mm, you taste amazing. I was afraid I'd take too much. <laughs> she winked at me, had a feeling she was just trying to flatter me. I nodded. The skin was a bit sore where she had bitten me. I touched the area gingerly. It wasn't actively bleeding, just a small dribble of blood. The giddy drunk feeling was fading. I know I hadn't had that much yet. My glass was more than half full. Why did I feel a bit lightheaded? She shrugged. <laughs> I don't know. Humans tend to feel that way when we feed on them. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot where I actually learned this from. I mean, uh, it was probably like from one of the visual novels I played recently or like one of the other games I played. But basically, like um, in some variations of this, like whenever a vampire feeds, uh, they actually release like some sort of chemical into their victims' bodies and it brings them a sense of euphoria unlike any other. So it actually feels absolutely amazing why am i info dumping all of you about like vampire lore which i may or may not be accurate in like you all subscribe you are all watching this i <laughs> this is what you're gonna get i smirked she did not lo look like she cared about any specific type of scientific explanation but i couldn't help but be curious that was for another night though she was moving in to kiss me again, so I had better things to occupy my mind. We had a wonderful evening. It started to get late, and I had work in the morning. Even though I knew I would be exhausted, I hesitantly said my goodbyes. I would have stayed longer if I didn't feel almost ready to fall asleep. I wondered if I would see her again. A year later. I sat at the computer and pretended to work. I had only been waiting for the sun to go down. Then, when it did, I waited a bit longer. Then a bit longer. I was running out of things to pretend to do. No matter how long I waited, she did not show up. Not Camilla, not even Elizabeth. I thought for sure maybe they'd come around again on Halloween night, but I suppose they had really found an alternative source. It had been what I wanted, right? So, up to the night with Carmilla. The night had gone wonderfully, but afterwards... Didn't exchange numbers or anything. I kept hoping she'd stop by, but she never did. I sighed and shut down the computer. The window was empty, no one tapping seductively at the glass. I hung up my lab coat and walked out towards the front. The doorway was also empty, no one knocking with purpose at this late hour. I knew I could go to Bloodlust and see if Camilla was around, but that just felt so desperate. If she wanted to see me, she would have. I sighed. It was fine. There were plenty of other women out there, and one day, I would find the right one. She probably wouldn't be a vampire. I dug into my pocket and pulled out my ticket for the midnight showing of Bride of Chucky. Nothing would cheer me up faster than a good horror movie, and the trailer had made it look like a fun time. I would marathon the previous Chucky movie to prepare. I smiled to myself and tucked the ticket back into my pocket. There was no reason to wait around here anymore. I locked up and left. No! No, that couldn't have been the No! No! Okay, so I'm pretty sure what's supposed to happen is that we're supposed to pick all the choices that would actually lead to additional hearts for Camilla. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go outside instead of opening the door first. Uh, I will skip over the choices which I have already done. Uh, but the ones which we've not seen before, uh, I will stick with those. Anyway, let's head outside. 
I wasn't afraid. I'd just go outside. I stepped out with only a moment of hesitation and looked from one to the other. Okay, now what? Carmilla stepped closer, placed her hand on my shoulders, and looked deeply into my eyes. For a moment, I felt like I was supposed to go in for a hug, but that would have been awkward, right? You have pet rats at home. Three friendly little things with... <laughs> quite embarrassing names. Hey, yo! <laughs> Freddy, Jason, and Chucky are cool names. Oh my god, yes! Freddy, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, and... I don't even know what Chucky's name is. I I never really went into like the lore of Chucky. I pouted. I've actually been very proud of those names. Wait. How did you know that? Vampire powers. <laughs> she wiggled her fingers and scrunched up her nose like the witch in that old sitcom. Samantha has nothing on me, my love. I can see your last happy memory. You were playing with them before you came to work today. My god, that was my only happy memory of the day. I nodded, convinced. I stepped back inside. I thought they would follow me, but they didn't. A little like Elizabeth was telling the truth about the invitation thing. Okay, I will leave you both. How about the vampire thing? That is... And that is where we're gonna skip ahead to the bar. So your drinks don't really matter here. Uh, right now, instead of trying to get to know her, uh, we gotta tell her an awesome story. So hey, let's go with this. Did you know rats didn't cause the spread of the bubonic plague? Wait, what? Oh? It was fleas. And bad hygiene. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, the fleas that were on the rats were the things that were causing the bubonic plague. She nodded. Maybe that was a weird thing to bring up. I smiled. You really like rats, don't you? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, they have a bad reputation. It's totally not fair. They make really cute pets, actually. She reached over and placed her hand over my own. My thoughts screeched to a halt. Her skin was soft, not cool, but not quite warm either. Totally not fair. I bet they're as darling as you. You think I'm a darling? Uh, yeah, um... I glanced away, not really sure what to say. I should change the topic before I explode. I lowered my voice. Are you allowed to tell me about how you turn into a vampire? All right, we're gonna skip ahead. Yes, we too tell her about our love for horror, and we're gonna skip ahead to whatever's different. One year later. You're taking forever. Holy frick. I'm almost done. Come on. This place makes me hungry. I know, I know. Just one more. I finished logging off the computer system and then turned everything off. Carmilla waited for me, wearing her favorite outfit, the same one she had worn when I first met her. I almost couldn't believe it had been a year. She swayed around the room, impatient but not agitated. The past year had been such a whirlwind. Lots of parties, lots of late nights at our bar, Something was always going on when Carmilla was involved. Our time together had been an enjoyable rush. We go to Bloodless all the time. Why are you in such a rush? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Uh, uh oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Her voice was breathy and it made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I cleared my throat. Well, I'm ready. What are you waiting for? Her eyes lit up the way they usually did, but she was getting her way, a pleasant sight. She took my hand and dragged me out of the clinic happily. I almost didn't have the time to lock up. We stepped into the bar and immediately I knew something was up. The place was empty. Where is everyone? Huh, how'd she set this up? I would have been nervous, but Carmilla was as calm as ever. I followed her inside. She moved with uncanny grace. I couldn't help but wonder if it was even possible for her to trip. Probably not. I closed the bar. Isn't Halloween a huge night for this place? Yeah. It was also a Saturday. Hush. She sat me in her favorite booth. The one that was always mysteriously empty. There was no sign. People just seemed to know not to sit there. She handed me a key. I looked it over. It was very rusty. Thank you. Move in with me. Oh my god! She sounded like she could barely contain herself. I looked up at her. I've been to Carmilla's house before. It was a gigantic old mansion littered with cobwebs and antique clutter. 
There was a cheerful old lady who shuffled around as a housekeeper, but she didn't keep the place up as well as she should. The place practically screamed of vampires living here in large neon letters. Move in with you. Yes! She hugged me. I smiled and made a show of putting the key in my key ring. I tried not to think of all the cleaning I would need to do to feel comfortable there. This is a big step. Are you really sure you want a human cluttering up the place? She grinned and sat beside me. I was thinking we could change you. Tonight. Oh, no way! She opened her mouth and showed her fangs. We talked about it before. I'd finally made up my mind that I'd like to be a vampire, but didn't expect it to be now. Maybe. I looked down at my body. This is the way I want to look for all eternity. Carmilla tipped my chin up so I could look at her. You look amazing as you are. If you'd like to wait though, we can. I just thought tonight would make it poetic. It definitely would. She shrugged, carefree as always. What about you though? Where will you get your blood? Where will I? I thought about that. What if we did your idea? The blood clinic cafe thing? Ooh. <laughs> I somehow figured that this would be something they would have discussed. Oh, Carmilla, come on. It's a neat idea, but an execution... I shook my head. The idea was to run a blood clinic, but then give the blood to vampires. There were laws and health codes, and... She kissed me, and I forgot my worries. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if that was a special vampire power, or just her power over me. I sighed happily. Don't worry so much. Things always worked out when I was with Camilla. I nodded. Wait, why wait? All right, let's do it. Uh, how was it done? She clapped her hands together in excitement and smelt sweetly. I drink a lot more than I usually do. Then I give you some of my blood. Like in practically every vampire movie we've seen? Basically. It won't feel great, but then it's over and... Ta-da! She held her arms out. Ta-da! <laughs> Vampire! My god. Thankfully no one else is around when she's like making this exclamation. I feel like you're underselling the part that sucks. <laughs> well, you've seen the movies. She looked down for a moment, then looked back up at me. I knew I could trust her. She never once done anything to hurt me. All right, let's get this over with. Here? Is here all right? I was starting to feel a little less enthusiastic. The dread of the bad bit hung over me. Still, let's get it over with already. Yes. I sat down and Carmilla made sure I was comfortable. She pushed her hair away from my neck and gently kissed my skin for a moment until I felt myself relax. The sting of her fangs was something I'd gotten used to over the last year, but this time it was different, as if they had sunken deeper. Uh -huh. I gasped for breath. As I felt my body become heavier and warmer, the room began to spin. Things grew dark. My heart pounded against my chest, as if it was trying to escape my ribcage. The throbbing moved to my head, and then I couldn't breathe. This was the bad part, wasn't it? I tried to open my mouth and suck in oxygen, but I couldn't. I moved my hands uselessly, trying to communicate with Carmilla what was happening, but I was too weak. She held me against her tightly, as if knowing my panic. My lungs were burning. A small voice tried to remind me that I wanted this, but my human survival instinct sent my mind reeling. And everything just went dark, and there was nothing. No light, no darkness, no sound. No sense of being. It wasn't like floating in blackness, but like falling asleep and knowing it would never wake up again. Ceasing to be. It was terrifying. Then my eyes opened. Pain arched from the base of my skull and shot down my spine. Ah! All that's a sound. The coldness slowly spread out. Then the pain subsided. It collapsed into the booth, breathing heavily. It's all right. It will be all right. I could finally hear her, but she'd been whispering reassuring things this whole time. I moved my tongue. There was a taste in my mouth. A pleasant, metallic taste. I didn't remember drink hair blood. 
That must have. It's going away. <sighs> the feeling. I felt a little dazed. Managed to sit up a bit and look at her. You'll be feeling much, much better very soon. Despite her calm voice, I could see the strain of worry flit across her face before melting into relief. After a few long minutes, I was able to sit up, and then stand. I was able to move and bend with ease. There was no ache and no resistance in any of my actions. I hadn't realized how limiting my body had been before. I stretched. It felt so good to twist and pull at my muscles without any defiance from my bones. I feel amazing! Carmilla kissed me. I wrapped my arms around her and paused when I realized she no longer felt like a moving statue. Fun, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I pull her back down into the booth and onto my lap. We kissed desperately with a bubbling giddiness. She was rougher in the way she began to tug at my shirt. I pulled at the top of the class of her corset. It's usually something that gave me no end of trouble, but this time, one yank was all it took. I heard a pop and suddenly the corset was in my hand. And on Carmilla, she looked down at me, eyes wide, and a wicked smile. I would have apologized for ruining her corset, but she ripped my own shirt in half immediately after. I felt a whisper of air against my exposed skin. With movement easier than it had been before, I managed to push her onto her back. We fell onto the sticky floor of the bar in a tangle of limbs. There, in bloodlust, on the dirty floor of her bar, we ravaged each other with a passion she had always been too careful to show me before. I knew then that we were equal in a way we had not been before. I almost regretted that we had taken so long to change me into a vampire. I had been reborn. A new life would begin, and with quite honestly, the love of my life, we whispered romantic affirmations through our moans of pleasure while we enjoyed the empty bar. The end. Well, we are going to be going ahead to check out what Elizabeth's ending. All right, for this, the first thing we got to choose is no thanks, strange lady. I am not interested in going out with strange women who tap on windows late at night. <laughs> Even if that woman was kind of hot. Please, dear one. Let me come in. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't do that. We were close, I started to explain, but there was a loud knocking at our front entrance. Damn it. Now what? We're skipping ahead, and yes, we are going to be picking that first choice, which was to uh, open the door and not just step outside. Uh, let's go ahead and see Elizabeth. All right, Elizabeth, you are my choice for today. Elizabeth cleared her throat. So, you still got lots of work to do tonight? I sort of do, but I think I'm going to put it off until morning. Is that wise? Yes and no. The boss wouldn't want me staying this late all by myself. She'd be worried about my safety. In fact, she had specifically told me I should go home. Yeah, about four hours ago. Right, right. If you're about to leave work anyway, perhaps you'd like to join me for a drink? I thought about the horror movies that were waiting for me, but how could they hold any appeal against a real-life vampire right here? Besides that, she was totally my type. The glasses, the sports jersey, those adorable freckles. I smoothed the shirt I wore under my lab coat down a bit. Clean thoughts, Mina. Come on. D yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I would like to get a drink. Just let me close everything up. May I come in? Oh, I paused. She noted my hesitation and lifted her hands innocently. I'm just curious about the clinic. You can say no. I am happy to wait for you here. Again, I really appreciate that vampires are so keen on consent. I absolutely love that. I thought it over for a moment. She had the blood. She seemed friendly and genuinely curious. There was no inner voice trying to warn me, in fact. It was very adamantly encouraging me. All right. Come on in. Just don't touch anything. I don't want to get fired. I watched to see if anything exciting happened, but I verbally allowed her inside. It did not. No sparkles or music. She just stepped inside as if the barrier had never been there to begin with, though it clearly had. I tried not to be disappointed. She followed me to the back room, quietly taking everything around her as she walked. Or she looked at me. 
I was glad I wore my favorite shirt today. I sell my computer and start to close down the software, making sure to save my progress. This is not at all what I imagined. What did you imagine? What did you imagine? God, it's like we're saying that it's like we're thinking the same thing. Hmm. I guess I thought there would be blood on the floor and restraints to hold people down. I looked up at her, horrified. What? She laughed. I'm kidding. I just thought it would look more like a hospital. This looks more inviting. In a way, yeah. I guess the Halloween decorations do help. I chuckled. I should not have fallen for that so easily. Oh, I really thought you were serious. Maybe I watched too much horror. You think, Mina? You like horror movies? Yes, I love them. What is your favorite one? I paused and had to take a deep breath. How could I pick? Night of the Living Dead? Um, Ram Stroker's Dark... Blah. Night of the Living Dead or Bram Stoker's... No one clipped that I said Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> anyway, Bram Stoker's Dracula. I... Always thought vampires were pretty cool. It felt a bit embarrassing admitting it, but Elizabeth only smiled reassuringly. The Dracula movie that came out a few years ago? It's so over the top and cheesy. I love it. <laughs> I think it's the best adaptation I've seen. There's also the fact I have the same name as one of the iconic characters. Oh yeah, that's right. I chuckled. What a funny coincidence. She grinned. I'm quite fond of that one as well. Ooh. Really? I've always really enjoyed movies. What's your favorite movie? She stared at me for a moment, then looked away. She seemed to be thinking it over, and her brow creased. I... I can't pick. The last one I really liked was Romeo and Juliet. It was stylized, and I've always enjoyed takes on Shakespeare. Wait, are you talking about the one with freaking Leonardo DiCaprio? I gasped. <gasps> Were you alive in Shakespeare's time? Elizabeth laughed and shook her head. No. Oh, wow. Do I really seem that old? <laughs> I thought all vampires were hundreds of years old. I shrugged and rubbed my palms on my pants. I am probably only a few years older than you, actually. Holy heck. So you're a new vampire. Basically. Are you disappointed? I was only turned a few years ago, just before I finished my bachelor's. Oh. Smart one this one is. No, of course not. It's just... Interesting to learn more about you. Her eyes widened a bit, and she turned away. What did you study in college? Marine biology. I'm working on my master's degree currently. Holy heck! Wow, that's really cool. What are you planning to do after you graduate? I'd like to be a professor, or focus on ocean life research. I'm particularly interested in sharks. <gasps> sharks! Holy heck! Sharks? Like Jaws, but I didn't say that. I had heard the movie wasn't popular among marine biologists because of the backlash she had created against sharks. Her eyes lit up, and I could tell it was something she was passionate about. Did you know that sharks have skin that feels like sandpaper? Tiger sharks might be my favorite. There is still a lot we don't know, though. Like, they will eat anything, even license plates. Wait, for real? I, I didn't know about that. All I know is that baby sharks are called pups. Like, they are literally ocean doggos. That's what they are. Goblin sharks are not only pink, but they are also considered living fossils. They were thought to be extinct until 1898. Holy heck! Sharks have existed practically unchanged for something like 400 million years. Can you imagine? Holy heck. Oh. I freaking love when the characters really geek out about stuff. Gosh. Wow. I didn't know that. I shut the computer off and took out the keys to lock up. I'm done here. So, um, where did you want to get a drink? I'd love to hear more shark facts. She was so smart. I love listening to her talk and really want to hear more. I'd never known anyone who was into marine biology before. There is a place that's pretty awesome, just don't tell Carmilla I said that. Where are you taking me? She pushed her glasses up her nose and grinned. I wasn't sure why I would tell Carmilla or why it would matter if I did, but I was happy to oblige. Okay. 
Let's go. We headed outside. I looked up and Elizabeth got us a cab to a bar. La la. Oh, we're going to Carmilla's bar. <laughs> I never got inside before, but I had heard plenty of rumors. Mostly about it being a gay bar, but now I wondered if there was more to it than that. It was pretty crowded inside, but she managed to lead me to a quiet corner. It had a really nice atmosphere, though. This place is nice. Yeah. I won't tell Carmilla. <laughs> what? Because you said I shouldn't, um... Right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what I feel like there's something more going on between the both of them. We fell into an awkward silence filled by loud alternative music. I'd suddenly forgotten how to hold a conversation. Never been good at dating, and it had been a long time since I'd been on one. I tried to think of something really smooth to say, but I couldn't manage it. I like this song. Ooh, she pointed at the ceiling. Yeah, it's great. She smiled and glanced at the bar. I'll let me buy you a drink. What would you like? Good idea. S something to do with my hands right now might help calm me down. Thank you. I'll have a... Ooh, dark and stormy tequila sunrise cranberry juice painkiller. Oh gosh, I... Uh, tequila sunrise sounds lovely. It's my go-to drink at unfamiliar bars. They're very pretty to look at. Not quite the same as the real thing, but it'll do. <laughs> they taste pretty good, too. I should try it out sometime. All right, I'll be back with a drink. She left, and I took a deep breath. This was going well, right? Thought so. Did she look bored? Nah, probably not. The change in location had messed up the flow of our conversation. Maybe I was just nervous here. In a bar, it felt more like a date. I should ask her more questions when she gets back. I glanced out into the crowd and saw her carefully making her way through it. She held a tequila sunrise and nothing else. I suppose vampires only drink blood. She returned and handed me a drink. I took a careful sip. Tasted great. That was fast. She shrugged, as if it was no big deal. I know the bartender. Then I explained why she didn't have to wait as long as everyone else who were all gathered around the bar. Really? That's cool. Okay, now's your chance to get to know her. Let's think of a really insightful question and... I don't want you to think I come here all the time or anything. <laughs> it's fine if you come here all the time, Elizabeth. Huh? I mean, I like bars. You know, every now and then. Uh, but I prefer a quiet evening at home, you know? Oh, sure. Me too. Really? Oh, yeah. I like to watch horror movies, order takeout, and hang out with my rats. Honestly, it's a really cozy time. And personally, for me as well, I do enjoy like um spending some personal time at home i mean heck like even if i had someone around it it's always nice to just like chill out probably check out memes together those are fun she grinned at me i had a feeling this wasn't a typical hangout but i didn't want to say anything i didn't know rats were a common pet rats they are actually the best pet they are wicked smart and you can train them like a dog they can play fetch and run obstacle courses. Also, hamsters are assholes. <laughs> okay, I really want to hear about this. She burst out laughing, covering her mouth, perhaps to hide her fangs. <laughs> are they really? You are way more likely to be bitten by a hamster than a rat. Do you have science to back this up? She smiled as she said it. And I couldn't help but notice how attractive she was when she was amused. Not really, just personal experience. Rats are seriously underrated though. Mine are so sweet and cuddly. I did not need to go into the evil hamster I had as a pet when I was a kid. I'm sure some of them were actually cute and nice, but I need to see it to believe it. I trust you. I'd love to meet them sometime. If that's alright, see for myself. I smiled down at my tequila sunrise, trying to ignore the way my heart was fluttering in my chest. Yeah, totally. They're very friendly to new people. I cleared my throat and tried to play it cool. I took another drink and tried to think of something not uncool to say. Elizabeth spoke before I could. What else do you like? Besides rats and horror movies? You. <laughs> she smirked and took a few steps closer to me, probably to hear me better. 
The music was pretty loud. Oh, vampires and musicals. Oh God, I don't know what's the right choice. Ah! Okay, apparently the right answer here is vampires. Uh, she is a bit of a geek and she doesn't really like to show it. Uh, vampires. Vampires are pretty awesome. She bit her lip and glanced away. You're pretty cute, Mina. I rubbed my arm, feeling embarrassed. I hadn't meant to say it, but I was glad I did. If only I could be brave again, but on purpose. I think you are too. <laughs> she grinned and took another step closer. She reached over and tucked a stray hair behind my ear. She was so close, I could smell coconuts. Was it her shampoo? I'd really like to kiss you, if that's okay. Yes! Bliss! <laughs> she glanced out at my lips and I felt my heart go from racing to full-on panic! I nodded. This was definitely okay. She leaned in to kiss me. I wrapped my arms around her shoulders. My mind went blank as I felt the rush of her fingers just under the fabric of my shirt. We kissed until I felt like my knees would give out and I pulled away. She began to kiss my cheek and then nibbled on my earlobe. I gasped at the way it felt and suddenly wonder if there were eyes on us. If there were, did I care? I felt the wetness of a tongue on my throat, and that stopped me cold. I tensed, desperately anticipating what might come next, but Elizabeth pulled away. Oh, I wasn't going to bite you. I wouldn't mind if you did! She looked concerned. Maybe she thought my reaction was from fear. You weren't? I moved down my shirt. I could still feel the gentle way she had caressed me. Did you want me to? Yes. Oh, uh. <laughs> At that moment, I had, which was a bit odd. I never wanted someone to bite me before. Maybe it's because I knew she was a vampire. I can if you'd like. I felt my face grow incredibly hot. Now it just felt awkward still. Would it hurt? It only hurts for a moment at first, and then it actually feels pretty nice. Ooh. She pushed her glasses up the bridge of her nose. I believe something in the fangs or saliva activates when it's mixed with blood that causes a euphoric effect, similar to morphine. Oh my god, yes, this was exactly what I was talking about. Oh. That was fascinating. Were their flanks hollow? Was it a chemical in their saliva? Additionally, the saliva causes the blood to be thinned, so it flows easier. However, if I lick the wound, it'll close quicker than normal. Whoa. What an interesting reaction. I know. I'd like to study it, but most vampires don't really care about the phenomena. They're just happy it works. Honestly, it is great that their biology works that way. I am seriously curious about like how vampire like biology is like. Like even if it's fictional biology, it is still something I really, really want to know more about. They tell me to just pretend it's magic. Ha! <laughs> oh. I wonder if it's like leeches or ticks. She made a face. Yeah. She chuckled and blushed, rubbing the back of her neck. Not great date talk, huh? I don't mind, like heck, like you can talk nerdy to me all night. Oh, it's fine. Both felt quiet, and I found myself look at her lips again. I should resist. I wanted to talk to her more. Who knows if I would ever be near vampire again. I'm actually very curious about vampires. You have questions? Can you really not enter a place without permission? She nodded. You saw for yourself. When you threw Carmilla? <laughs> I chuckled, remembering the way she looked squished against an invisible barrier. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I can't explain the science behind that either. Fascinating. Can you go out during the day? Nope. I would burst into fire. Then I would turn into ash. At least, that is what I've been told. I've never seen it, and I don't want to test it. I like to imagine that vampires just have, like, a, a sensitivity to sunlight. I mean, like, there are people out there with a sensitivity to it. I don't blame you. It was almost as if I had found a kindred spirit. Someone to discuss things scientifically with, and who didn't mind when I rambled about things. She rambled too, but I enjoyed it. We spent most of the night talking. She told me about vampire squids and jellyfish? I told her about obscure, underrated horror movies. It was exhilarating to speak so passionately with her about things we loved. Eventually, I started to feel my entire body screaming at me to sleep. 
I knew I needed to get home, even if I didn't want the night to end. I finally had to say my goodbyes and head home. I really hoped I would get to see her again. One year later. <gasps> there she is! I was staying late to do paperwork again this Halloween. This time I had someone keeping me company. This software's interface looks so ugly. Oh, tell me about it. I know, but my boss likes it. She gave up on looking over my shoulder and began pacing around the room. She looked everything over. She was careful not to disturb anything, but no matter how many times she had been here, she remained curious. It was probably because of the scientists in her. Hmm. But I thought she would notice. I glanced up to watch her. Normally being around her was relaxing. This past year, we had grown comfortably close. However, tonight was very different. I went to ask her to move in with me. I'd even gone out and bought some heavy curtains and blinds. She might say no, so maybe it's too soon. Maybe not. Ah! Are you alright? You look really frustrated. Also, I'm wondering, like, okay, considering, like, Carmilla is definitely the top in their relationship. Like, in this relationship between uh, Mina and Elizabeth, like, is Mina the top here? I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah, I'm fine. I tried to smile. She turned away to look at some safety signs we had hanging up. This place doesn't pay you very well, does it? I snorted. No. <laughs> there were some months where I struggled, but I made do. She knew that. As a student, even a vampire student, she was in a very similar situation. She did have a part-time job as a research assistant, and sometimes worked in the university's library. It paid about as well as my job, though. I was thinking... Yeah? Between my income and your income... I stopped what I was doing to give her my full attention. She pulled absently at her ear. I was just thinking... It might be beneficial if we moved in together. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, definitely. I couldn't believe it. I stared at her, mouth hanging open. I had been so nervous for so long, and she just came right out and said it. Oh, I guess that wasn't a very romantic way to put it. There are romantic intentions as well, of course. This past year with you has been... It's been just amazing. I like the idea of waking up together and having meals together and... Maybe you don't think so. I smiled. She was frowning. I needed to explain. I hadn't meant to give her the impression that I wasn't fully on board with the idea. No, it's just that I was actually planning to ask you the same thing tonight. <sighs> really? To move in together? Yes, and to be roommates. <laughs> she closed the distance between us and bent down to meet my gaze where I sat at the computer. The gloom she had earlier was completely gone. I turned away from the computer, wanting to face her fully. Yeah. Great minds, huh? <laughs> she kissed me gently and then pulled away. I don't want to distract you. I know you have a lot of work to do. I shook my head. If the equipment wasn't so expensive, I shut it off the desk to prove that I would choose her over work. Instead, I saved and shut down the software in a less dramatic gesture. I am done with work. <laughs> I shut the computer down and stepped away from the desk. I grabbed the key so I could lock up the place as I went. I turned to Elizabeth and clapped my hands together awkwardly. Let's get out of here. I took off my lab coat and she followed me into the waiting area of the clinic. Will you s sleep in my coffin with me? <laughs> coffin? I squeaked, looked over at her, and knew she had tricked me again. She laughed. Should have known better. I had been to her apartment, and there was a normal bed. I laughed with her. I don't know. Maybe they're comfortable. It's too morbid to even think about. <laughs> she shuddered, though she was still laughing. I was also thinking... If you ever wanted to be a vampire, too... Pretty sure she's gonna say yes! I had reached for the door, but stopped, my hand hovering near the handle. It was something I'd considered before. She was a vampire and I was a human. How long could that possibly go on? I would age and she would stay the same. I needed human food and she only required blood. There were benefits to being a vampire, but there were a few drawbacks too. There have been so many things to consider. And there had always been something we avoided discussing before. Something that would occasionally hang over us, creating an awkward silence. 
I answered carefully, because in truth, I didn't really know what I thought about it all yet. Yeah? I would turn you into a vampire, if you asked. I studied her expression. She wanted me to be a vampire. Did she like me better as a human? I'm glad you would, but what do you think? Would you like me better if I was like you? She shook her head and stepped closer to me. I adore you the way you are, and that wouldn't change if you become a vampire. I will be happy if you are happy. It's also your body and your choice. I won't take that from you. I only offer so that you know that I'm willing. I threw my arms around her. She always seemed to know what to say. She kissed the side of my head and I took a deep breath. I want to think about it more. I pulled away so that I could look at her. I want to consider things carefully. Weigh the benefits against the negatives, you know? How scientific. I approve. <laughs> she smiled at me and I resumed prepping the door so that we could leave. I figured you would. I chuckled, locked the door, and headed out into the night. I had found something in Elizabeth that was rare and precious. We had a connection that I had always dreamed of. I loved her in a way that I had not thought possible. Someone who truly accepted me and appreciated the things in me that others found annoying. In turn, I felt the same way about her. Hand in hand, we headed home to our home. The end. Anyway, that was Night of the Lesbian Vampire. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. I absolutely love sapphic stories like these. They always give me such fluffy feels. And gosh, Elizabeth's story just gave me that exact feeling. Like, God, I am just smiling like an idiot right now. But let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Would you rather go with Carmilla or would you rather go with Elizabeth? Like, let me know down there. In fact, start a comment war. I, I don't really care. <laughs> But anyway, hope you guys have a lovely rest of the day, and I will be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.